Welcome to another episode and another special episode of Power Word Crit. I'm Ander, and I will be your keeper for this evening, because we are playing Monster of the Week. And with me today are some wonderful folks that you know and love. I am Kayla. I am playing Avery O'Grady from the playbook The Flake. I'm Corin, and I am playing Seven through the professional book. I'm Ashlyn, and I am playing Val, the science gal. I'm David, and I am playing Martin Gross, the monstrous. So last time on Monster of the Week, the local members of the Park Service, the Paranormal Activity Research and Containment Service, were sent on a mission to find out what was happening in Beacon Rock. This is a state park in southern Washington, kind of on the border with Oregon, and there had been an attack on some college-age kids in this state park. None of them were killed, but many of them are in the hospital. The group is investigating around. They, they found the park office and talked to Ranger McDonald. In, in doing so, their party was split as Martin seemed to have gotten distracted by a sickly bush. And so he was able to pass, help it pass on. While tracking down Martin, Avery also seemed to wander off, but made a discovery on her own in a deer that had been shredded by some unknown creature. Near that deer, Martin discovered a petroglyph, a carving in a rock, and was reminded of his past, in his dark past, that such things might indicate that spirits are nearby, and so he attempted to contact such, and did so. The spirit told him that an ancient creature from long past, called by the people who once lived there, was the silencer. Upon talking about this, the spirit box that Val had hastily put together started reacting, giving forth words of the local spirits and words like defiler and trespasser and other such angry feelings and words. And the very air around them began to feel dark and oppressive and the trees closed in. It seems that the spirits are very unhappy with the silencer. This seemed to spook the Park Service members, and they made a hasty retreat back to the main campground. And thus leaves our group. I don't know about you guys, but that was pretty scary. I mean, I, I know we deal with paranormal things, but like, normally they have explanations. I don't have an explanation for that. Do you think we might need to call him back up? Well, they didn't follow us, so I think we should be okay. If they were following us, yes. But I think, I think we should be fine. I think we need a little bit more information before we can call in backup. They, they might not heed our request until we give more proof. That's true. Our boss will just look or call us, or we'll call him, sorry, and we'll tell him what we got, and then he's going to say, that's all you got, and he'll start laughing at you. Trust me, I know. <laughs> Has this happened to <laughs> you a few times, Avery? More than she cares to admit. We'll go with that. <laughs> Probably because of her conspiracies. Maybe. Like, most of the things that you call about, they're actually related to conspiracies. There were facts <laughs> and conspiracies, but there were facts. Just not enough. These, these seem tenuous at best. <laughs> how, he may have said that. Uh, how has the agency dealt with ancient beings? Because ancient beings seem to be kind of big deals. And has, has, has the agency ever dealt with them before that we would know about? I think that they have. Okay. Um, just because something is old doesn't necessarily mean that it's incredibly powerful. It may just be mean that it's been dormant for a really, really long time. Well, I uh, I think I'm going to go talk to Ranger McDonald again. How's my hair? Perfect. Thank the you. same as usual? What? It's perfectly the same as usual. Oh, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Said the narrator from the sky. <laughs> Inner voice. Sometimes you just need to be reassured. Okay, so I I'd, I'd like to go talk to uh, the Thorsons. I believe they were. Mm-hmm. Yes, we're in the police report. Yes, I'd like to talk with them as well. See if we can figure out more information. Uh, especially since I felt like Ranger McDonald, like she, we, it's really hard to ask her when you're coming from the police, saying you're coming from the police. Right. And they're like, oh, didn't you read the report? No, that, that very brief briefing did not give us any information. Right, because no. your, your cover story is that you are investigating as the mm-hmm. second 
round of police, right? Yep. yep. So obviously we would have the original case report in all of its glorious details, not. Mm-hmm. So, Thorson's sounds like a great idea. Yeah, oh. let's let's go see the Thorsons. Have good luck with Ranger McDonald Seven. Oh, you know I will. <laughs> Martin, what 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 is your intention to? Where are you going? I think that Martin, who by the way doesn't look perturbed any more than he ever does, Did by you what just, just walk occurred. out of that area. Yes. <laughs> and he only walked out of it because every somebody was dragging him. Glad and, that someone dragged you out of there. So he is usually assigned to stick near Val since, you know, he's supposed to be working forensics and other things helping her out usually. So he'll just follow her. Okay. Hey, um, Martin, you want a lollipop? I found some more in my other pocket that I forgot about. I'll accept it from you and kind of look at it for a bit and kind of hold on to it. I haven't, you know, started looking at it yet. Just, it's there. <laughs> and Val is just waiting for him to start looking at it because it's one of her experiments. Oh, oh no. no. <laughs> wait, wait so is this just an experience, experiment to see if he will, you know, partake of a lollipop or is it, this is a sucker that you have developed? I'll say it's a sucker that I've developed to turn mm. someone's hair green. <laughs> oh. Temporarily. It's supposed Love to be a it. prank. Is this one of those things where, you know, it has to work into the system? And so, you know, sometime in the next month, your hair <laughs> will start growing green. <laughs> <laughs> eh, it's weird science. Weird science. <laughs> Which means that it'll happen at the most inopportune moment. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Yep. <laughs> as long as he o- looks... Officer, why is your hair turning green? <laughs> Because he's lying. It's a lie detector. I just, I've just, i just decided now it's a lie detector. Oh, my gosh. oh, oh no. Boy. So it only turns awesome. green if you lie. Do you have do you have more of those lollipops? Oh, out of nope, it's my prototype. He's my beta test. <laughs> mm. But he hasn't tried it yet, so <laughs> we'll see. So I will also note that last time you guys mentioned that Val wanted to check social media to find out more information to see if That's right. any of the mm-hmm. teens have posted about such things. You also wanted to investigate the campsite, the scene of the attack. Yep. To find out more information there. Yep. Should we go investigate and meet up at the campsite? Yeah. Go investigate yeah, let's people? do that. That sounds good to me. Let's do it. Cool. So basically, well, we're going to go talk to the Thorsons. I'm just going to have my AI system, Eerie, look up any hits on social media accounts of people talking about unexplainable attacks that they experienced the night before. And so kind of doing that in the mm-hmm. background while we're making our way to the Thorsons. Maybe with a location mark of this park or something? Yes. Like, I have the parameters of this location, this time frame. Mm-hmm. Um, this type of post. Yeah. Sure. These, yeah, I think you're sophisticated kinds of enough people. to be able to do that. Do that. Mm-hmm. Cool. So I'm, I'm expecting that to take a while, and she'll just spit out a report basically at the end when she has compiled enough information for me to digest it. Sure. How about you roll and investigate the mystery? Okay. As Eerie. <laughs> and I think that using the internet, you get a plus one. Yes. That's correct. Using my AI. Mm-hmm. All right. So investigate a mystery. That is a seven. Okay. It's a mixed success. Yeah. So we will remember that and let that come up as it arrives. So you you will have one question that you can use essentially to ask specifically. All right. Perfect. Okay. So Val, Avery, and Martin are going to the Thorsons. Yes. The three of you approach the trailer. It's a nice one. It's well kept. It seems relatively new, like probably in the last like three or four years, but it's seen a bunch of use, but seems like it's good use. Okay. There is a fire pit. There are some camp chairs set out. The Thorsons don't seem to be out at the moment, like out in the campsite, but their like car is there next to the yeah, trailer. Yeah, so they're not, probably not in the camper as well. Well, we also want to try investigate. I'm saying that they are, they are probably in the camp. Oh, okay. They're not Making like, sure. Making immediately sure. invisible. Cool, cool. Since we're at here you know, at the Thorsons, Martin's not a per- people person, but he will go ahead and look around the area kind of visually and start wandering about 
since he figures that the rest of the group is all going to go and talk to people. Are you just aimlessly looking, or are you looking for anything specifically? So he is specifically looking for things that would be strange and unusual. However, he's always interested in things that are sick and dying and okay. things like that. I think in the immediate area, you don't see anything that's particularly strange or unusual. Long across the way, you can see the police tape that's on the campsite that was attacked. Mm -hmm. That seems a little unusual in a, in a campsite. All of you can hear the sound of like a small radio inside the trailer indicating that someone is probably there. It's playing kind of catchy 80s music. Can I learn anything about the type of people the Thorsons are? They like their 80s music. Mm -hmm. From this campsite, so even though that this is a site that they have moved to recently, it seems like they have made it well kept. That these are people who leave things better when they leave than what it was when they arrived. Looking around at the unused campsites, is they, they look in less repair than the, this one that they are in. Okay, and we know that Mr. Thorson approached the situation with the cryptid, as opposed to being attacked by it. So we're talk coming to him to ask him about his experience, not because we expect that the monster is following him. I think that while they're talking, though, I will spend time trying to see if I can pick up anything odd or supernatural in the area because he made his presence known to the creature, and we don't know that the creature doesn't bear him a grudge. Okay. So that's what I'm going to be doing while they are talking. Okay. So, Avery, what's our game plan to ask the Thorsons about what happened last night? Well, we've already told the uh, ranger that we're cops and we're here for a second run. And I, I, I think it's fairly normal to send people back in for a second interview. So uh, I think that's what we're doing. Okay. Just making sure we have our cover story. Okay. Do you want me to knock first or do you want to take... Who wants to lead? I will let you because they'll think I'm just some punk teenager. Oh, <laughs> that is true. I forgot what you looked like for a second there. <laughs> okay. Yeah, as, as a reminder, yeah. Val is a 16-year-old young woman. Yes. Her hair is in a messy bun. She has like pencils and protractor stuck in her hair. Oh my goodness. Because why not? It's very big. M maybe a stylus. Yeah. Yeah. A Talbot stylus. Maybe some leftover wrappers that she <sighs> stuck there oh no. not thinking because there wasn't a trash bag nearby. <laughs> yeah. Maybe yeah. she probably take the lead. I look a <laughs> Me with my trench coat, I look a maybe a little more put together. I don't know. Okay. We're going to walk up to the door and I'll knock on it and see if they're there. There's a sounds like voices within and then the door opens and a man in his 60s opens the door. He seems fairly fit. He's got a military cut hair that's graying. He's got a mustache and he has an earnest face and pretty piercing eyes. Yes, can I help you? Mr. Thorson? Yes. Oh, okay, good. Who, who are you? Um, I am Avery O'Grady. I'm from the police force. This is my partner, Val, and we were sent here to just kind of do a quick second run of the whole situation that happened last night and just ask you a couple of follow-up questions and things like that. Sure. Yeah, I'm always happy to help out with the police. What can we do for you? Can you just maybe run me through the scenario last night and kind of just lay it out for me just so I can make sure that I've got all the details? Well, sure. Uh, do you want to come in? Oh, th yes, that would be wonderful. I figured it would be better than just standing here on the doorstep. Dario, we've got company. Seems more of the police force come in here to ask a second round of questions. All right, yeah. I just put on some tea. Oh, wonderful. Okay. You walk in, and again, this is a very neat space. They seem to be making the most of it. There isn't a lot of clutter or such things around. But everything seems to have a place, and it's in its place. You can smell like a, a lemon tea or something like that. Ooh, that's lovely. Going on. And there, there's, you know, some comfortable bench seats and a little booth kind of thing that they lead you to. So settle at the table with your steaming mugs of tea. The Thorsons sit ready and prepped. Avery takes a sip of her tea and asks, So what can you tell me about it? Well, it was just, a, just another night as far as we can, were concerned. There were some rowdy kids at a campsite next door, which I was kind of frustrated about, but it's just, it's what it is, one of the things when you're out camping. But it was pretty disquieting when the rowdy kids were making 
frightened noises and there were pretty some awful, terrible things sounded. So I, I went over to help as soon as I could, immediately ran over there and there seemed to be a very tall person and he seems like he's going to say something more but kind of keeps with that and that looked like it had on a long cloak or something and the kids around were hurt there was a young man on the ground bleeding a girl was attempting to help him the figure was near the fire and one of the kids attacked him attacked it with using what was on hand it seemed like a guitar but didn't seem to affect the individual besides reacting knocking them back into the air even seems incredibly strong the kid ended up in a tent in a, in a mess there i was still far away at that point but when i got close something spooked whoever it was and it it took off dari and i tried to help the kids as best as we could we were able to call the camp authorities fortunately it seemed like one of them was starting to come you know from from the noises and such that you know you can see the campus camp office wasn't too far away so we were able to get them packed up quick and called the paramedics and such to get them taken care of but i stayed a, a hard vigil out making sure that, that person or whatever it was didn't come back did you see him at all again that evening or any trace anything weird at all happened the rest of the evening no i didn't i didn't see anything like that no okay so Avery noticed his pause earlier when trying to describe the person. And so she would like to comment and say, okay, so I need you to tell me everything that you remember as you remember it. It may not make sense. It may not, it may sound funny. It may sound crazy, but usually there's an explanation, but we just don't know it until after we find out everything. So can you run me through some of the details again? Just make sure, just tell me whatever you saw. And particularly anything you felt emotionally or instinctually? Hmm. <laughs> Odd question, but... Yeah, he, he kind of looks over at you and like, that's that's an interesting way to go about it, but okay. I, I learned this in my, that one by a cop before. in my psychology <laughs> yeah. class. Sometimes the most obvious things are disguised by emotions that you don't realize can provide vital clues. Mm-hmm. I like that answer. Nice. This is why she has her degree <laughs> at 16 years old. Yeah. <laughs> so I think he kind of collects himself when he thinks about it. I'm also deciding whether to make you roll for it or not, but <laughs> I think okay. not. Well, I help. So. Yeah. I think I think <laughs> yes, that you guys are good. You, you had a convincing enough argument on that. Ooh. I won't make you roll for to convince someone. Mm -hmm. Okay. He thinks about it and he kind of gives you a, a, a look and kind of sheepish look that you're going to think I'm crazy. But I don't know that it was a person or a bear or whatever the police from before thought. I think it was something else. It was bigger than any bear or thing that I've seen. It was easily nine feet tall. I don't, I don't know if how tall bears are. Uh, Depending on the bear, it could be nine feet tall. Yeah. However... <laughs> It w a, a bear would be probably not thick. Yeah, probably mm. not. Bears are not native. skinny, and not native to this Unless region. Unless it's a Slender Man bear. Oh no, it's <laughs> oh, a Slender Man bear. An Curiously writing notes. I think um. <laughs> the most emaciated bear possible is thick. <laughs> to that effect, so easily nine feet tall and well muscled. It seemed to be wearing something, or something was draped over its shoulders. Didn't quite understand that, but it. I only saw it for a moment, but I saw its face. And it had long nose and glowing eyes. Like a humanoid nose or like a the long nose of like, a dog? Like a dog, like a wolf. Okay, okay. Nose of a dog or a wolf and what else? It seemed fairly humanoid. Okay. But larger and seemed like maybe furred. The lighting was, I mean, the firelight was there, but hard to tell. It was pretty shadowed and... It was lit from behind. I only saw its silhouette. Okay. And did this thing, like, inspire... I'm assuming... I mean, obviously you were afraid, but... Was there anything else you odd you noticed as you were running towards it? Especially, like, when you looked at it? What do you mean? Uh, I've been in scenarios where sometimes I have been grasped with a 
a considerable amount of fear, more than I would have warranted for such a situation, especially after the fact. I, having been in the, I spent some time in the armed forces, in Gulf Wars, in Desert Storm. I know how that fear of going into battle is that that seemed more akin to it was, and it wasn't anything more than that. Okay. Let's see. Nine foot bird, something over the shoulders, nose like a dog, humanoid face. Was it wearing anything on its lower half? Or was it whatever was on its shoulders? Did it cover the whole thing? I couldn't see it. Okay. Okay. I've never seen anything like it. I don't know what it is, but I saw what it did to those kids there, and I don't want that to happen to anything else. Mm -hmm. Some people would leave, but... We've been coming to this park for a long time. This is one of our favorite places to come, and we want to help keep it safe. He kind of nods, and you, you see what looks like a like a rifle cabinet or something ah, um, ah, uh, up above. I see. It's you know permit. We've got permits and everything, but mm -hmm. I would like to ask Daria if she saw anything all the way back to the campsite. Like obviously she wouldn't see any details, but maybe she saw some odd movement over where. It Maybe it went. She she thinks, but no, I was I was too far behind. I didn't see anything like that. But what I have noticed in the after effects is that none of the noises, the natural noises from the animals, it has been silent out here ever since. But we had there there were creature noises yesterday, right? Like before yeah. the Yeah. Interesting. Val's gonna take a moment and think back when they were traveling through the woods. Did they hear anything? You did not. Hmm. It's because you were noisy. <laughs> I'm sure that was it. Loud feet. You didn't hear birds. You didn't hear things like that. No squirrels. Those things are loud. I think that maybe you chalk that up to you know, being out in the wilderness from the city and mm. things that it's so much quieter out there, but didn't realize how quiet it was. And she was also just very much focused on trying to find the companions who ran off somewhere. Yeah, the, other things the on your mind. The creepiness that happened with the rock and the spirits that were kind of speaking through her spirit box thing. <laughs> there was a lot to take in. We're going to cut to Seven and Sup. you approach the camp office and I think that you see a, a vehicle that's pulled up. A, a camp vehicle, it looks like. You know, it's decked out in you know, green and very such things mm -hmm. so that maybe one of the other rangers has gone inside i'm going to mess my hair up just a little bit make it a little more attractive and i'm gonna brush down my clothes to make them look a little bit less frayed because we dealt with psychotic rocks earlier and i'm sure seven was a little frazzled the rock wasn't psychotic and you guys didn't actually hear the rock that was Martin who was able to talk to it. The spirit box, however, was exciting. Yes. Box. Yeah, the spirit box was going crazy. And there was something that freaked everybody out. He checks and looks around and realizes he's still holding that darn leash. And so he's and just going to... Martin's gonna... not on it. And Martin is not on it. <laughs> and th this is but it never, like a... he never would have been on it. The leash is like a length of like canvas kind of... Yeah, I envision it as like a multi-purpose tool where you can like unbraid it and it turns into a net. Or like you can use it to as a rope to pull people up. It's just one of those weird contraptions that our agency has. Okay. So. Uh, okay, so it's, we're, we're gonna have to yeah. establish some tags for that. Definitely. Um, <laughs> I don't think it's gonna be a like a weapon thing, but it's, it's a tool. It is a tool, yeah. So okay, cool. We can do that later. Mm -hmm. So he's going to just because he was very disturbed by the events and. Sim has been around for a while. Not much disturbs him, but this really did. So he's going to take a deep breath, and he's going to walk to the door. He's going to knock first and walk in and say, uh, Ranger McDonald, I have a few questions for you. Uh, sure, yeah, I'm happy to help. And this is Ranger Phil Gallant. He turns and holds out his hand to Ranger Phil Gant. Phil Gallant. Gallant, Ranger Gallant. Nice to meet you, Ranger Gallant. My name is Officer Taco. Oh, yeah, I forgot that. Right. I almost <laughs> forgot. I was going to introduce Smith Seven. Good job. Um, Officer Taco, uh, were you here last night? I think that, yeah. That he, he was the ranger on duty. He was a ranger on duty? Yeah. Okay. And he's a little 
heavier, and he's got brown hair and a boyish face and dark eyes. How old does he look to be? I'd say he, like mid-early 20s. Does he take my hand? Oh, because you extended to it for a handshake. Yes, shake. I was just like, why would he take your hand? <laughs> it's marriage. <laughs> <laughs> this is how we do it in the agency. <laughs> take my hand. Won't you take a poor sinner's hand? <laughs> oh, gosh. So, yeah, he, he takes her hand and you know, shakes it. And he's like, you know, pleasure to meet you, officer. Pleasure to meet you, too. May I ask you some questions about last night? Sure, yeah. When you arrived at the scene, how long was it from the attack to when you got there? I just arrived probably just a few moments after the, the Thorsons did, I think. Okay. Um, I, I saw them standing there for a bit. It took me a little bit to get out. I think they were already close by, so they were able to get there a lot quicker. But I, I heard the sounds of distress, so I got my flashlight and my sidearm and went out there to go help. Do you happen to remember any weird situations out there? I know the initial police officer had asked you normal questions, but we're here to cover all the bases just in case. Did you happen to notice anything weird about the cuts on the college students or any strange markings on the trees? Because if this was a bear attack, I would think something would have gotten left behind. It definitely looked like there was a, a large animal had gone through the, the bushes there. And the, the kids looked like they got tore up pretty good like with some claws. And nobody died? Nope, nope. We were very fortunate in that aspect. Did you notice any strange sounds or lack of sounds? Maybe a s smells or was there any strange wildlife action in the area? I know some of these questions might be strange, but we like to cover all of our bases. Are you guys like a special unit or something like that? Seem like you're asking kind of different questions. Yes. Oh, well, that, we, that's we cool. We work more on the the psychological side, and we just want to make sure that what the initial report says and what we determine match up. So anything weird, even if, I don't know, we've had some people say that they've seen vampires breaking into houses, anything like that can very easily point us to at least something that we're looking for. I knew it. I knew there were vampires out there. Oh. Fellow conspiracy theorist, yes. Where's so, Avery? so like, this might be what, a good thing Avery's not here. Did you follow up with the vampires? Like, were, were oh, they really out we there? Did. Oh my gosh! Well, what would you find out? Well, I, I'm sorry to burst your bubble, but the vampires were just a bunch of teenagers who <sighs> were doing some illegal stuff mm. and thought that thought that they were vampires and did the whole teeth sharpening thing. And not to rag on the normal vampire culture out there, but they didn't know what they were doing and they were a little high. Mm. So sorry to burst your bubble on that one. Well, that, of course, that's that's what you gotta say, right? I I get you. He kind of like touches his nose and like points at you, like yeah, it, yeah. I, I understand oh, kids, it's... teenagers, drugs. Yeah. I wink at him. <laughs> it's, oh, it's so. It's, However, I'm so glad Avery's not here. But. However, did you notice any strange sounds? Lack of sound, smells. Did it's, maybe like it's the funny light flicker you, weird? It's funny that you say lack of sounds. The woods out here. are... Gosh, staying quiet. It's spring. This is like mating season. and Usually the birds are out and doing their thing, but it's quiet out here. And understandably so. They had a pretty big predator come through, it seems. Enough to spook the whole lot. It's true. And this is another strange question. Not necessarily... He's kind of like eager to. He's like, okay, these are these are the special unit. Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, d does your current campsite here have access to running water? Oh like, sure, can yeah. Can the campers hook up everything and have running toilets? Oh no, is he going to be worried about vampires now? Is this the safest place <laughs> he could be? There's running water all over the campsite. He's got oh. a big emotion. Faucets. And... Oh, how interesting! I never thought about that. I didn't be there until just now. <laughs> Most of the campsites don't have the you know, the full you know, electricity or water or things like that. There are spigots here. You know, you can come up to the camp office here, and there's there's one on each end to fill up your your water stations. And Great. You know, 
we don't have like waste disposal or such like that. Does this office have a toilet of some sort? Yes. Where is the nearest septic tank? <laughs> you know now oh he's dear. gonna follow you to the septic like, tank because he's gotta find know what you're doing. And it's it's out back and under under the ground. There, you know, there's the septic field back there. Well, I ask not because of vampires or werewolves yeah, I, or anything strange like that. I didn't think that that like can that. attract with vampires or werewolves. No, I, I ask because sometimes if a septic tank has some sort of leak, sometimes it can attract wildlife to the scent. And if you have a septic tank problems, that could have attracted a bear or something. We're just covering all our bases to make sure that this hmm. doesn't happen again. But I hadn't, hadn't thought about that. Well, we, well, we'll have to check things out. We haven't had any troubles up on our end, if you, if you know what I mean. But you know, maybe, maybe there's something going on underground. Hmm. One more question for you. And I kind of lean in close. Not like like creepy close but lean in close a little bit and just quietly ask have you lost any time have you seen any bright flashing lights does our agency have rules on what we're allowed to you know (laughs) just spread among the masses seven is totally having fun right now (laughs) oh no you know like when when i was sometimes when i'm driving I, i feel like i got there sooner than i thought I usually think that's just because I'm, you know, thinking up things and and such and just arrived there. But, like, I think I lose some time there, yeah. But You do? Yeah. Okay. And I'm going to pull out my wallet. And I'm going to pull out a card. And it says Marty Smith. And Marty Smith and Seven have known each other for a very long time. And they prank each other. Oh. Oh, (laughs) And I'm just going to lean in close and say... If you ever experience anything weird, this is our guy. He fields all of our calls in our in our office. Give him everything that you know, and he will record it. I love this. This is awesome. It's like, oh yes, thank you, officer. Uh, I'll be. I I think I've got some ideas. I'm gonna follow up with Marty. Yeah. Make sure you mention it's Officer Taco. Officer Taco. Yep. He, He like writes it down on the back of the card. This poor guy's gonna have to change his number. That's the goal. <laughs> Maybe he already has multiple times. He probably Seven has. keeps finding his new number. <laughs> They're friends. They have to be able to talk to each other. No, I don't know if they do. <laughs> <laughs> friends or just work acquaintances? This sounds like more more than I don't know. We might have to call Marty and find out. Oh dear. Thank thank you, Ranger Gallant, for your time. I'm gonna go talk to Ranger McDonald now. Yeah, and she she comes out from the back. She was you know working on something. Welcome back, officer. Thank you. I was just logging the the reservation for the the Boy Scout troop over in the group campground had just come in. Phil had just got them settled in and warned warned them about the you know, wild animal situation that we got and told them to be extra careful and not leave out food and trash and such things as such kids are likely to do. Of course. Where did you say this Boy Scout troop was? Are they nearby? Yeah, we, we got a, a group campground here in the state park. It's Easter. You, you go off. She points over at the map that's there in the, the office. And it, it's a little ways to the east and up up the trail. Up a, a ro- paved road, rather, that you guys came on. Seven's a little concerned. <laughs> there's a bunch of kids here. Mm-hmm. He's going to lean over just over the... I assume there's a can or, counter or yeah. some sort. Yeah, she's behind it. I'm just going to lean forward and just say... I'm I'm sorry for earlier this morning. It was a little unprofessional. I, I'm actually new to the area. I've only been here for about four months or so. And this is my first lead case. And not gonna lie, I really don't know much about this area. I heard some things that sound very strange. I heard a couple people as I was walking in, talking about some sort of monster that might live in this area. Have you heard of anything? They, they called it the silencer. Have you heard anything like that? It just, it, it kind of threw me off earlier, so I apologize if I was a little off this morning. It sounds like something out of a movie or like one of Phil's comic books. Um, True. What kind no. of comic books do you read? Never mind, I'll ask <laughs> I, I don't read them, so I don't, I don't, I don't read them, so I don't know. 
Right. Uh, have you heard of any strange creatures running around in this area? Well, I mean, this is historically Bigfoot country. You know, we've got a lot of people coming through here looking for Bigfoot and that's true. stuff it's like true. that. So that's probably what you've heard. Have you ever seen a Bigfoot? No. Shoot. Well, anyway, I just wanted to apologize if I came off a little strange this morning. For... It's fine. We're always happy to help the police. Of course. I want to investigate a mystery mm -hmm. based on what I've learned from Gallant and from McDonald to see if there's any more information that I may have missed or anything like on the walls or anything like that that could tip me off to maybe an attack like this has happened before and they're just not telling me anything. Mm, okay. So this is investigative mystery, right? I feel like it's more read someone because you're seeing if they're telling the truth. That's your kind of primary thing. Or are you looking for clues in, in the surrounding? I'm looking for clues in the surrounding as well. Go ahead and roll investigative mystery. Just roll plus sharp. That's an eight. So you have one hold to spend for a specific question in the realm of what happened here, what sort of creature is it, what can it do, what can hurt it, where did it go, what is it going to do, and what is being concealed here? I guess it would be what is being concealed here if there's any other similarities or anything that's happened before in this area. I'm going to say that you see a kind of behind the desk and such on the wall, a picture of a young woman who's got brown hair. She looks like she's maybe 20 and a name underneath it, Bailey Lawson. Ranger McDonald, who's that? Who's who's Bailey Lawson? Uh, she's one of the campers here. She's uh, missing earlier this week. We had a big push to go out and find her, but hasn't turned up anything. Where did she go missing? What area of the park? She was rock climbing at Beacon Rock, which you'd think would be really easy to, to see someone around there. It's it's right near the road, but that was the last place anybody saw her. Thank you for your time, ma'am. No problem. Right then, all of you, wherever you are, uh -oh. hear a scream <gasps> of a young man. Oh, no. And it seems to be coming from the trailhead. What do you do? Is this a Run young out. man as in Don't a young adult or a young <laughs> man as in a child? A young maybe adult. A bo maybe a boy scout screaming. Mm. Okay. Good question, but this is a young adult. All right. Okay. I'm going to pretend I've had a firearm on me this whole time to look the part of a police officer. And I'm going to say, come with me. And I'm going to take yeah. him out. They, bring, is bring, it, they, yeah, they went take to action. Out. <laughs> I'm going to take him out. Oh, gosh. <laughs> bang, bang. On, on a date or? <laughs> <laughs> out of the door. <laughs> so they respond quickly, being the local authorities here as well. Mm -hmm. They look at you and you mm -hmm. all scramble out. Martin, you are probably in the closest position. And in your looking around and being aware I make my way over there swiftly and, yes. Swiftly, Martin? Mm -hmm. Yeah, he can move quickly. He can Do you glide? Quickly. Since Probably. he almost seems to, <laughs> as if on raven's wings. So, Martin, since you specifically said that you were paying attention to the weird, mm -hmm. that feeling that when the spirits got angered around you built up in kind of this tension, not immediately around you, but towards the in a specific direction, you were just getting a large feeling of that way, and suddenly you heard this. I think that Martin was already starting to wander that direction, having explored this area, and now that it's there, he doesn't, if within hearing range, he's not going to worry about the car or van or anything else. He's just going to, you know, sprint swiftly and efficiently you know, over there. And, you know, he gets quite excited now. You know, he, he may be, you know, stepping out of his Martin role for a bit. And he is just, you know, he's making his way over there very rapidly. Martin, what you see is a young man in his early 20s. He's got, like, binoculars on, backpack. And the thing that you notice most of all is that he is being lifted in the air by what looks like dark tendrils. And you feel this energy from the spirits nearby and it is palpable in this rage and frustration and you can see the vegetation nearby leaning towards them as well what do you do 
Where are these dark tendrils coming from, did you say? I'm going to say it's from the ground. So I am going to stride up, and I am going to, raising my hand up at it, and I am going to say, stop. Are you going to exert any supernatural control, or are you just going to try Is there a use magic that would have an effect there? Possibly. Here it is. Communicate with something that you do not share a language with. That is absolutely what he would try doing right now. And so I am exerting my power, and I am saying stop, but the language I'm saying it in is not English. It is a more fundamental, we'll call it foundational language. And your intention here is? So my intention right now is to draw this thing's attention to get it to desist from whatever it is doing. So I'm going to actually have you roll protect someone because that seems to be more in line with what you're doing is that you are trying to protect this individual from mm. harm. All right. um, but I'll let you roll weird from it because you're drawing that. All right. So I roll the two dice. Yeah. Roll 2d6 and add weird. That sounds pretty good. I believe my weird is plus three, so that's going to be 11. Oh, well done. Nice. That's a success. So you draw the spirit's attention, and the young man who was rotating in the air slightly, his movement has seemed to stop for the moment. You have the spirit's attention, and the young man is like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I just, ah, I didn't mean to. I'm going to ignore the young man right now. Yeah. Martin is yeah, totally unconcerned with this guy. I am going to say, what are you doing here in this communicative language? And I'm going to try and compel this spirit to answer me. You hear in a voice that sounds like it's coming from far away. This one caused trouble. Set it free. Trespasser. Defiler. Needs to make recompense. So I'm tempted to ask to roll dark past to see if I can identify what the spirit is. You said it was a spirit. It's a spirit. I think that depending on what it is would change my response. So can I try and roll dark past to know about that or would that be a different check? I'm tempted to just give it to you. This seems to be the same tone as the spirit that you talked to before. Right. And that this is, or in the same kind of vein, is that this is a spirit of a person who potentially lived here. You know, one of the you know, so First is Nations. Human, this is a human spirit. All right. If that's but, the case. You know, enhanced and expanded. You know, maybe communed and become part of the surrounding area and the connected forces. If that is the case, then I'm going to I'm going to tell the spirit, you are not called on to judge. Let him go, and those who are called on to judge men in life will be called to judge him. Roll convince someone. This is roll plus charm. Very Ooh. bad. Ooh. Oh, no. I got three, and my charm is negative one. Oh, <laughs> no. Do you want to use a luck? No. Okay. <laughs> Uh, so number one, mark experience. You get experience points for failures in this game. I think that the spirit is like, I have every right to judge. Mm-hmm. This is my land. These are my people. This one broke our customs and our laws and therefore is subject to us. You are interfering. And the tendrils begin moving towards you. All right. Martin's a trouble. At this point, I'm going to say seven and the rangers arrive to see a young man floating in the air held by dark tendrils martin standing in the middle of the path seeming to communicate with someone and dark tendrils are reaching towards him so i will say that seven at least has definitely seen this before sometimes martin becomes more active (laughs) and usually this is accompanied by bizarre supernatural phenomena a pretty common one is darkness and such tends to just cloy and gather around him and so he is almost has a black aura and he has his hand raised up in a kind of a halting kind of motion while he's talking to whatever this thing is But his skin is just pale, and even in the dark, you can tell that his eyes are just empty, black void. There's no eye there, as far as you can see right now. You better tell the other officer that this is not a vampire. Don't shoot it. We're in a vehicle. (laughs) (laughs) Yep. Seven, you have a quick moment to do anything. How high is this guy in the air? His feet are, like, at shoulders. Oh, so he's not that high? No. Okay. But he is floating in the air. 
If I were to, say, shoot this thing, would I hit Martin in my current position? What are you shooting? The tendrils. Okay. So if Martin's standing right in front of it, can I get a clear shot on this thing? I think that the the tendrils are kind of moving out and around a little bit, a little bit wider so that you possibly could. I think that you have to maybe move in a little bit to be able to do so and maybe expose yourself to danger as well. Okay. I would like to read a bad situation to see yes. what would be the best thing That's to exactly do in this situation. That's exactly the way to do that. <laughs> Eight. Old one, you can ask one of the questions in the vein of what's my best way in? What's my best way out? Are there any dangers we haven't noticed? What's the biggest threat? What's most vulnerable to me? What's the best way to protect the victims? What's the best way to protect the victims? Probably getting them away from here. So what I'm going to do, because I know Martin can take care of himself for at least a round or two, I am going to move up a little bit. I'm going to raise my pistol and I'm going to shoot underneath the victim. Just try and hurt the tendrils so it lets go of the person. Okay. These do look like smoky kind of things. That's fine. Okay. Just letting you know. Okay. In D&D, you can hurt shadows. <laughs> this isn't D&D, though. It's true. Yeah. So you are preparing to do so? I am preparing to do so. You have not done so. I have not. Okay. Yet. Martin, tendrils are coming towards you. What do you do? This thing doesn't seem to get the picture, and so a fight seems to be breaking out. So I am going to, is it called, it's toughness, right? Is it kick some butt? Yeah. My hand is going to move back down to my side, and I'm just standing there, and I start to take slow steps towards this thing as its tendrils reach out to me, and I'm going to say, you may think that you have the right to judge, but you are wrong, and I do have authority to intervene here and you need to leave. And I'm gonna roll kick some butt. There is no visible, normal thing. Like I'm not swinging my fist or anything. Mm -hmm. When Martin kicks butt, you don't see anything on anyone except things around him, specifically what he's targeting, start to die. Cool, roll plus normally tough, but I believe since you have unholy strength. Exactly. You get to roll weird instead. Mm -hmm. So I rolled a seven plus three is 10. Nice, so a 10 plus, you get to choose one extra thing. So number one, when you fight something that is capable of fighting back, you both inflict harm on each other, but as a 10 plus, you get to do something extra. You can gain the advantage to take plus one forward or give plus one to another hunter. You inflict terrible harm with plus one harm. You suffer less harm by minus one harm or you force them where you want them. So I have a question. If you force them where you want them, will that mean carrying the person with him? Or will that mean dropping them? It's where you want them. So I'd say that you could maybe push them away and leave the young man there. That is the one that I will choose. Martin's presence is necrotic. It feels its essence start to wither away and it has to back up from that. And so it leaves the person behind as it has to retreat for a moment. And you also deal harm. It says that it is one harm, magical, close, ignores armor, and it does not have to be melee range, so I don't know if yeah. I'm in melee close range or not. Close is but... like shotgun range. Right. So it's outside of melee range, but not far away. What I meant was I'm not sure if I am right now in melee range with the spirit. Oh, certainly. Okay. Um, is that it, coming to you. it reaches out Perfect. and knocks you back. All right. It reaches out, grabs your leg, and pulls you to the ground. And Martin's head smacks the ground for one harm. Excellent. Ouch. Seven. The insubstantial kind of smoky tendrils and such that you can see seems to have retreated a little bit under Martin's onslaught, and the young man drops to the ground. Great. So I don't have to shoot this thing anymore. So I'm going to turn back to the rangers and say, we'll discuss this later. Grab that guy. I'm going for my guy. And I'm going to run up to Martin and I'm going to drag him to his feet and say, Martin, time time to back up. Time, Grab time to go. Grab the man. Man's getting grabbed. I'm grabbing you. So, and I hope the rangers follow what I'm doing. Yeah, cool. Go ahead and act under pressure. Oh, boy. Mm. Mm -hmm. Oh, no. Oh, mm. no. This is roll plus cool. Oh, I'm good at cool. Yeah, that you are very cool. That does not matter. It's it's a five. Ooh. Oh. Mark one experience point. Okay. As you reach Martin and the rangers 
go to help the young man there, the smoky tendril that whipped Martin to the ground grabs you, Seven, and you leave the ground. Perfect. I think that's the opposite of perfect. (laughs) And begin feeling like squeezing around you. Avery and Val. Mm Mm-hmm. Yep. You heard a scream, uh, a shout of a young man, and conversation stops in the middle. Thank you so much for your time. Book it out. (laughs) Yep. (laughs) Sounds good. You leave quickly. You hear scrambling and what sounds like cabinet opening and suspect that the Thorsons probably are going to be following along behind. Cool. I'm pulling out my uh, 9mm that I have. Okay. As we're running. And yeah. I am pulling out my Electro Blaster. (laughs) Oh my gosh. We are are so trigger happy. It's great. I love it. (laughs) I mean, the game game gives you guns. Yes, it does. (laughs) It does. I even have a weird one. (laughs) (laughs) That's the Electro Blaster. That's amazing. What does the Electro Blaster look like? I'll tell you when I when I use it. Okay. <laughs> you all arrive at the scene. You see this. Seven is in the air. Martin's on the ground. The rangers seem to be trying to help a young man on the ground. There is this smoky, weird substance and this familiar, unsettling presence. Oh, joy. Um, from a, a moment, you know, from 30 minutes ago or an hour ago or whatever. What do you do? We see seven in the air. Yeah. Its tendrils are around my throat, right? I'm going to be shooting yes. for these tendrils to see if it will drop seven. Val and Avery. Yep. You notice also that the roots around some of these trees seem to be starting to move. Oh, and no, 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 no. One slinks towards you, Avery. No, no, oh. no, 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 no. What do you do? We're going to dash for it. I think we need to make it to the car or something so that we can drive away. So I, I'm going to see if I can. So you're running away to go to the car. No, get the car to knock I have it to out. Get... It is behind you. I'm trying to figure out. Let's see. Because I need to get these guys out as well. How far away is the car? Like one turn run, probably. I'm going to say that it is far. It, so in near, close, and far, it is far. I can't so, get like, the car. you're not going to get there, like, right now, necessarily. I can't get the car. It, seven it'll has spend, the keys. It'll spend, oh, yep, yeah, that's a thing. Yeah, one of Seven's things that he wanted to do was actually run to the car to just slam mm. into this thing. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I, I'm going to amend that. I can say that you can probably get to the car, but not not get it back Yeah, right that's now. fair, that's fair. Okay, so I'm looking at Trust Your Gut, but that one looks like it's more of uh, where to go versus what to mm-hmm. do. That's an intuition thing. If you're looking for what to do right now, it's read a bad situation. Okay, well, I'll go ahead and do that because I, yeah. It's the, this looks bad. What do I do? Yeah, what do I do? It's like, oh, this looks, I can't shoot this thing. You're looking for an opportunity or a advantage. Nine. Okay. You have one question that you can ask me as the keeper from that list or from another thoughts that you have. Hmm... Are there any dangers we haven't noticed? What's most vulnerable to me? And then what's the best way to protect the victims? I kind of want to do, are there any dangers we haven't noticed? So I think that I mentioned the the roots and you see that those are approaching everyone, not just you. Oh no, oh no. And you have plus one ongoing to act on that information. Oh, okay. It's the little tidbit on the end of read about situation that I may have failed to mention when somebody else did this. So I apologize. Okay. We're still learning. Hmm. I'm going to assume getting onto the pavement and closer to the cars is probably our best bet. I don't know how to fight uh, nature. Nature does not fight. I don't. Ugh. I can't shoot shadows with a gun and I can't shoot tree trunks with a gun. It just doesn't work. Sure you can. <laughs> okay, you can shoot the tree trunks. I'm still a little iffy on the shadows. Tree spirit, whatever. Shot. They can, but I don't think it's going to do anything. <laughs> I don't know where the vital part is that I need to hit. Sure. Okay, so I'm going to put the gun away because there's nothing for... I can't figure out what to shoot. And we're going to go ahead and I'm going to tell everyone to watch out for the trees. And then I'm going to see if I can help get seven down. Okay. How are you going to try and get seven down? I guess pull. Yeah. So do that <laughs> while I'm shooting on, at really? the shadowy thing. 
to distract so, it. That is true. Avery runs up to go and try help Seven. And a nice yes. and slender Avery going and trying to hang off of Seven, going, get, let it go, let her go, let him go. It's around my neck. Oh, is it really? Oh. I didn't realize it was around your neck. Oops. Avery. Oh, oh dear. Well. Okay. Go ahead and roll act under pressure. Roll plus cool. Somehow I succeeded with a 10. Yeah. Because I have a minus one to cool. Oh. Yeah, I was reading your dice and I was like, that's more than 10. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have minus one. So uh, mm. 10. Nice. Sweet. Yeah. yeah. So you were able to get to seven without, oh, and you had plus one. Oh, yeah. Plus one. So, so back to 11. 11. There you go. 10 plus on act under pressure as you do what you set out to do. You were able to get to seven dodging over the tree roots and things mm -hmm. that you may begin to be able to, to start getting seven away from this. Okay. Is the shadow like, is it, can I touch it? Or is it like only touchable if it wants to be? Kind of the latter. It's okay. kind of awful. Okay. So shooting it was probably not yeah. going to work with my gun. Val, yeah. what okay. do you do? So since seven has been rescued. Uh, process. Kind of? In process. In process. Okay. Then I'm still gonna shoot at the shadowy thing with my mm. electro blaster. Yeah. Yes. I wanna see if it works. <laughs> Me too. Cool. So kick some butt. Yes, do it. Don't miss. Don't miss. Don't miss. That's a four. Nice. Oh, no. Well, hey, I got a failure. Don't hit me. Mark that Mark experience point. <laughs> Learn from your mistakes. Yeah. <laughs> Don't shoot my unreliable electro blaster at an unknown entity. Was this a prototype? It could have been. Oh. <laughs> so what does it look like? Oh, yes. Yeah, so describe your electro blaster. As Val is aiming at this shadowy entity, her gun looks like a hot pink sparkly water gun. Oh my <laughs> yes. Oh but goodness. it packs a punch when it works. Sure. So I think this is an opportune moment to pull from that unreliable tag. Is that what was it? So it is. Or unstable. Yeah, it's unreliable. Unreliable. Yep. Okay. I think that it shorts out. Oops. And. Oh, dang it. I had it too close to my spirit box, and the spirit box took all the juice from my electro blaster. Dang it. That greedy spirit box. Mm -hmm. <laughs> How dare it. <laughs> yeah. And I think that the easy thing to say is like, oh, it, it didn't work. You know, but. <laughs> Maybe a tree root trips me up. <laughs> yes. So, number one, that does happen, and you take one harm. Oh, no. As you do so. Your electro blaster fires, and um, let's see who's about. Oh dear! I'm the gonna rest say of us are all in the group together. <laughs> yeah, I think mm. that Martin's probably the closest by there in I'm direct line of fire. Everything. And so I think that Martin's probably gonna take. Uh, how much harm is your electro blaster? Oh. Three. Oh. Uh, I'm gonna no. say you only take two harm. Oh. Because uh, it dissipated Lancing a little blow. bit. Okay. You're almost unstable. <laughs> when am I unstable? Um, four. four. Okay. I can heal Martin, you. You just got shocked. Seven ran up to you. You gave him instructions to go rescue the young man. The rangers have grabbed the young man and are, are you know, kind of looking down at the at the ground and trying to step over these roots that seem to be clawing towards them. They might need to get into a car. Avery has run up to Seven and is pulling down on his legs pull, in kind of a tug of war with the spirit. Uh, what do you do? You know what? Martin has recalled that his fleshy meat puppet is vulnerable to harm. And that would be rather inconvenient for everyone around him if it were to, you know, be inconvenienced in that way. Certainly a delay of things. And he also has remembered that there are other ways to deal with spirits. And I think that right now, this thing probably has, you know, it, it seems fairly resistant to, you know, bullets and things like that. Spirits can be banished. 
And so he is going to attempt to banish this. Yeah. Nice. That's a use magic, I believe. It is. I got a seven, which means it succeeds with a glitch. And yes. And looking at my glitches, <laughs> choose your effect and a glitch. So do I get to choose? So, yeah, you choose your effect, which is your know, banishing... And then you get to choose your glitch. But I get to choose, like, how that happens. All right. So I'm going to say that it succeeds, but it is of short duration. Yeah, that makes sense. So Martin gets back up and speaking in this strange language again, he begins to recite these words that are fundamental laws and concepts of the universe. And then the monster, there's probably this almost supernatural implosion of energy as it goes from its you know from this plane back into the spirit world beyond where it can grasp and, and grab at people yeah absolutely and Just then like I turn that. I turn to everybody and say leave if it wishes to come back it will and quickly book it out of there we book it yeah <laughs> and Martin is also going to book it with them and I think that is where we're gonna end this session tonight. Phew. Well, we're not close to dying yet. <laughs> Martin True. is a little close. Too close well, to comfort. I have a surgical room that's part of my lab. Perfect. <laughs> and since my yeah. lab is on your van. <laughs> yeah. Yes. You do have the tools and technology and skills. Because I think, Seven, you, you are trained in medicine, I believe. I am. I am a medic. Ooh, um, very so nice. you guys are well set up to you know take care of these wounds. Theoretically, use magic also has a healing effect. Yes. But you could also glitch and make it worse. Mm. <laughs> mm. It could have something funny, like it draws unwanted attention. It has a problematic cool. side effect. Oh, no. More unwanted attention? More. Important question. Did Martin lick the lollipop? <laughs> <laughs> um, the lollipop is in his pocket. It's probably getting sticky. It's in his, po- it's in his breast pocket that came on the white shirt you got. Oh, no. So it's kind of sticky That's a there. terrible thing. <laughs> so he has not licked it. Yeah, I think that in all the excitement, he probably just put it back. Okay. I mean, he has That's a little okay. bit of time while walking around outside thinking about hmm. things. Mm-hmm. So at the end of the session, yep. uh, is that we have a move to do here. Yeah. The end of the session move. So Level up. there are questions here. Did we conclude the current mystery? Not yet. Nope. Did we save someone from certain death or worse? Yes. yes. We did. Yes. <laughs> Maybe. We'll have to see how we're for feeling the moment. about him. For the moment. Certainly. Because he needs, he needs to be punished. <laughs> <laughs> the, the spirit seemed I to really think so. I really want to talk to this guy. Yeah. What did he do? Well, the spirit specifically said that he released something. I know. I want to know what he did. He was apologizing, too. Uh-huh. He knows he goofed. He done messed up, Aaron. <laughs> <laughs> did we learn something new and important about the world? Well, we, yeah. we found out that men can become spirits. Mm-hmm. If, they, if they, you know... Learn the right secret arts. We also learned there's a missing girl. Oh, that's yeah. true. Mm-hmm. We learned there's a missing girl. We learned, uh, I don't know if it's a piece about the world, but you know, certainly for the mystery, we learned that this guy has done something, released something, probably the silencer and you know, the spirits of you know, nature and land are out to kill him. Mm-hmm. He may not be safe anywhere. <laughs> this guy out there playing with an Ouija board and didn't close his portal. <laughs> <laughs> he left rookie an, mistake. He left an un, un, right? un, un, untended campfire oh, on the silencer's, you know, burial ground. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it woke him up. Mm-hmm. It got <laughs> out of control. Mm. That's it. We solved the mystery. Just kidding. <laughs> Congratulations, guys. <And> just, <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to change the answer to the first one. Did we conclude the current mystery? Yes. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> no more Monster of the Week. Sad. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> And did we learn something new and important about one of the hunters? Yeah. Martin can... Martin? Martin can do some crazy crap. Yeah. <laughs> He's more than just the occult answer machine. He's got some He's some got tricks some up his sleeve. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Very cool. Don't and worry. I, I'm, sure, I'm sure by the time next session starts, he'll be back to normal. And <laughs> I don't know if it counts, but Meat Puppet... That was definitely his internal monologue, but yes. Okay. Yeah. Yes, I know. That's why I was saying <laughs> that, that was narration that we heard. So, so you, you, you. I, I will say that the party knows that there is some sort of possession or something mm-hmm. that is going on with Martin. 
there is something you know in Martin's body that may not be you're not entirely sure where Martin ends and it begins. So is that three? We got two or three experience. Let's got see. Three. We got so far at we're at three. We saved someone from certain death. Mm-hmm. Learned something new and important about the world, mm-hmm. and learned something new about one of the hunters, which is three questions. So you get two experience points. Yay. I have leveled up. Okay, two. Yeah. Okay, cool. I leveled up. Huzzah! All right. So where where is everybody at right now? I am at one on my second round. Cool. I am at zero. Zero. So did everybody level up? Yes. Yeah. Good job, guys. So the leveling up move is so you mark experience points whenever you roll total six or less or when a move told you. Whenever you mark the fifth experience box, level up. Erase all five marks and choose an improvement from your list. Do I have to keep track of how many improvements I've had? No. Okay. Well, kind of, yes. After you... After you've leveled up five times, you get to choose an advanced improvement. Okay. So. I might go ahead and just take, see, it all fits together. You can use sharp instead of charm when you manipulate someone. That makes Mm -hmm. sense. So in this, are we probably going to be manipulating someone someone in this next turn? Anytime that you need to convince someone. Convince. Okay, cool. Just making sure. Yeah. I I have renamed that move because I don't like it. Cool. (laughs) So Val and Seven... So I what took plus one to tough because mm-hmm. I didn't like having zero toughness. That's fair. So now everything is positive. Oh, good. Oh, nice. <laughs> I feel How well optimistic rounded. Of you. <laughs> <laughs> nice. And I am actually going to take something from another playbook. Yeah. Ooh. Ooh, do you have that ability too? Very mm-hmm. cool. Yeah, I think. Mo- most playbooks do have a take a move from another playbook. Mm-hmm. Oh. I think. So I'm actually going to take something from the divine. Ooh. Ooh. So I did go ahead and went for taking the sight from the uh, spooky, which says you can see the invisible, especially uh-huh. spirits and magical influences. <laughs> you can communicate with and maybe even make deals with the spirits you see, and they give you more opportunities to spot clues when you investigate a mystery. Nice. Cool. Good game. <laughs> Good. Yeah. Good. Yeah, Good. Thank, you it. thank you for making it great. Thank you for listening to this episode of Power Word Crit. Stay tuned for more adventure on PowerWordCrit.com or your favorite podcast streaming site. Bill Gallant. He's a Phil. Yeah. (laughs) He's a Phil. (laughs) Oh, boy. What does that mean? With a PH. (laughs) The kobolds who were all named Phil. Oh. He's a Philip with a PH. This is what happened to him. Fell into our world and became a ranger. (laughs) (laughs) Still close to nature. He's he's living the cobalt dream. He's become a character class. (laughs) Yes.